Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you are here for total transformation, total triumph, this year, next year, henceforth, the rest of your life, praise the Lord. This is the day. His day. Your day. Our day. It will be done. What are you? Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for what you have ordained and plan to do. We're asking, Lord, everyone here, there, everywhere will taste of your total transformation power in Jesus' name. Turn everyone around. I will pray, Lord, whatever we are, whatever the condition, whatever we're going through, from tonight, it is well with every soul. Confirm your promise and prophecy in the life of everyone tonight, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody shout, yeah. Amen. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're looking at Daniel chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 20. Daniel chapter 1, we're looking at verse 20. We're talking about Daniel, about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then what we have in their lives that God did for them were transferring it to your life tonight in Jesus name Daniel 1 20 it says and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them he found them ten times better ten times better that word better is what I'm bringing to you tonight. That whatever you have gone through in the past, a better thing is coming. A better future is coming. Better health. Better progress. Better family. Better life. Better profession. Everything become better in your life in Jesus' name. The Lord is inviting you and he wants you to respond because he has the power, he has the ability, he has the love, he has the willingness to make everything, literally everything better in your life. And it is starting tonight. You are healthy, things are still going to be better. You have Everything you have desired and life has been going well for you. It is still going to be better. That word better is what I want you to hold on to. And then to take that word to the end of the year. And then across the year, coming year will be better than this one in Jesus' name. In all matters, matters of wisdom, matters of life. Matters of understanding, matters of progress, in all matters, matters of learning, in all matters, matters of achievement. The king inquired of them, he found them better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. The topic tonight is divine call to a new and a better future divine call the lord comes and he calls and he invites he says i've seen your life i've seen your tears i've seen your problems i've seen where you have been and i come to call you from where you are to a better life and somebody shout amen there are three things we're looking at, and the Lord invites us to this better life. 
Number one, the deliberate corruption through humiliation and Babylonish lifestyle. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to humiliate us. He wants to put us down. He wants to pin us down. He wants to drag us down, pull us down, and stamp on us and leave us there. But God will not allow Satan to have the final say in your life. In my life. In my family. In everything I do. God will not allow Satan to have the final say in your life. In Jesus name. The deliberate corruption through humiliation and Babylonish lifestyle. Number two is the decisive commitment to a higher and better lordship that will bring our lives under the lordship of Christ. And because of who he is, his name is higher than any name. His power is higher than any life. And because of who he is, when he becomes your Lord, then you're committed to a higher lifestyle, a better lordship. Number three is the divine call to the highest and brightest life. Divine call to the highest and the brightest life. Darkness will vanish away from your life. Deprivation, degradation, disease, and all those negative things that follow many people throughout life, they'll vanish from your life, even from tonight, in Jesus' name. Look at it from number one now. From number one, we're looking at the deliberate corruption through humiliation and Babylonish lifestyle. Let me tell you the story. The children of Israel were at two of them just like here we have north we have east we have south and we have west they were divided into two sections the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom the southern kingdom the people of judah and then the northern kingdom they are referred to as the people of israel the people of judah at they disobeyed the lord they had gone astray they were living like babylon they were living like they didn't have the grace of God. They didn't have the strength of God. They didn't have the focus of God. They were not obedient to the Lord. And the Lord said, okay, you want to live like Babylonians? Come on, I'll take you to Babylon. It came as a punishment for them. And they were taken to Babylon. But understand, they were already in their mind, in their character in their behavior, in their rebellion and disobedience against the Lord. They were already living like they were in Babylon. And God said, you don't understand what Babylon looks like. Okay, I'll send the king of Babylon. And they came and ravaged Judah and took them to Babylon. Let me just read the story to you. It tells us in Daniel chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 1. It says in verse 1, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Look at verse 2 there. It says in verse 2, and the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, which they passed with part of the vessels of the house of God which he carried into the land of China to the house of his God and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God then in verse 3 we're told in verse 3 and the king speaks unto Ashpenaz the master of his eunuchs that he shall bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes what had happened is that many people in Judah thousands of them they were taken from their state they were taken from their tribe they were taken from their towns and they were taken to babylon remember i told you that many of them were already living the babylonish life 
a sinful life, a degraded life, a defiled life. But Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego happened to be part of the people that they took to Babylon. But understand, God had a purpose for Daniel. And for the rest of them, that's why he allowed them to go there. And eventually we're told in verse, in verse 4, it says in verse 4, And children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach. They might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Then in verse 5, we're told what happened, the king appointed them a daily provision and of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years. It was a period of from the angle of Nebuchadnezzar bring washing, heart washing, mind washing, character washing. What I mean by that is he wanted to turn their mind away from the God of heaven. They wanted to turn their heart away from loving God with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind. They wanted to turn their character from a Jewish character and a righteous character to a Babylonish character. Brainwashing to tell them where you were wasn't good enough. Here is the scene. Here is the standard. And here is the lifestyle you ought to follow. Why are we learning about that? Because that is what exactly, exactly what the prince of the power of the air. That's exactly what the God of this world. That's exactly what Satan wants to do. He wants to brainwash every citizen of the world. He wants to mind wash, turn our mind, every citizen of the world. He wants to heart wash. He wants to turn the heart of everyone here in the world in the negative direction, into a depraved, defiled direction. Because that is Babylon. Now, as we look at what he wanted to do, just to humiliate them and just to change them and just to change their mind but why let me come to revelation chapter 18 revelation chapter 18 and i'm reading from verse 4 in revelation chapter 18 reading from verse 4 it tells us and i heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of our sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Now, Babylon was going to be judged, and the king of Babylon did not want to go through that judgment all alone, did not want to go that through that torture all alone, did not want to go through that eternal destruction all alone. Exactly what the devil is thinking about. The devil knows that he's down. He came from heaven. He rebelled in heaven and he's here on earth and he knows that his time is short and he knows that the end of Lucifer, the end of Satan, the end of that old serpent, the end of the devil is eternal perdition eternal suffering he doesn't want to go there alone that's why he wants to corrupt as many people as he can in the world and he wants to get to you by temptation he wants to come to you by attracting you to the lifestyle of babylon what's the lifestyle of babylon and what is the lifestyle of babylon going to do for everyone humiliated Everyone brainwashed, everyone defiled, everyone degraded, everyone that flows along with the life of 
the Babylonians. Look at Psalm, at the Psalms, Psalm 53, and I'm looking at verse 2. In Psalm 53, verse 2, it tells us, it says, God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand that did seek God God was looking at the whole of Judah and they seeking the Lord no they were not were they following after the commandments of the Lord no they were not were they towing the path of righteousness the path of rectitude and the path that is right obedient to the Lord no they were not then that's why they were transported to Babylon they were living like Babylonians already and to Babylon they will go and the Lord is still looking everywhere in the world how are you living What's your lifestyle? Is it the lifestyle of the Babylonians? That's why humiliation comes. And that's why degradation comes. That's why if somebody lives like the Babylonians, eventually it will end up in Babylon. And when Babylon falls, when Babylon goes down, when Babylon gets into eternal punishment, that fellow living like the Babylonians will also perish with Babylon. I will not perish with Babylon. God looks down from heaven upon the children of men everywhere to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. And then in verse 3, in verse 3 it says, every one of them is gone back. That's what God discovered of Judah. And he said, everyone, virtually everyone, it's like almost everyone except Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But he says, every one of them is gone back. They all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Look at our lives as we are today. Even if we go to church or we don't go to church, even if we're educated or we're not so educated, even though we're well-traveled or we're not well-traveled, everyone is gone back. Gone back from what we used to know as the right thing, as the proper thing, as the righteous life, as the Christian life. Everyone is gone back. They're all together become filthy. Feel the language, feel the lifestyle, feel the dressing, and feel the disposition, and feel the action. It says they're all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, and the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread. They have not called upon God. And it came to the point in Judah, they, they didn't regard God as anyone. The God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, they didn't regard him. They lived their lives as if they did not need God. Many people are like that today. That's why eventually they went to Babylon. When they got to Babylon, then they discovered there's not a right place to stay. There's not a good, clean place to stay. And this is not a place for a dignified human being, whether man or woman, to stay. And Michael then brought a message. Look at Micah chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 10 there, Micah chapter 2, and we're looking at a verse 10. It says, Arise ye. That's the message today. Look at Babylon. Look at the lifestyle of Babylon. Look at the degradation of Babylon. Look at the defilement in Babylon. And look at the humiliation in Babylon. Look at how the devil pulls people down and drags people down and pins people down in Babylon. And it says, arise ye, you will come out of that Babylon. 
out of the lifestyle of Babylon, out of what they are drinking, out of what they are smoking, out of everything, what they are worshipping. It says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. This is not your rest. Anyone that comes, gets to Babylon, lives there, lives like them, drinks like them, smokes like them, behaves like them, dresses like them, carry on life like them. There'll be no rest. There is no rest, says the Lord, for the wicked here on earth, no rest. And there in eternity, no rest. There's the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And there is no rest for any of them on that other side forever and ever. In Babylon, there's no rest. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because because it is polluted. A polluted life is a Babylonish life. A degraded life is a Babylonish life. A life of unrighteousness, a life of bribery, of corruption, of immorality, of drunkenness, of smoking. A life that is turning the man upside down. It's like he buries his brain and is waving his legs in the air. That kind of life that is not proper. It's a polluted life. It shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. That's why Daniel took his stand and he said, this is Babylon. We're here. I didn't want to be here, but here we are. And then he made a decision. That's the decision that has kept the name of Daniel even till now like a bright shining star i come to you tonight and i'm saying that you will come out of that babylonish life your life will shine your family will make progress your health will be what he thought to be at god had promised us originally in jesus name let me come to point number two now and this number two is the decisive commitment to a higher better lordship here are two lords wanting your attention and you cannot serve two masters at the same time it's either the lord of heaven or nebuchadnezzar the god of this earth at, at that time and you have to make a choice here is the lord saying i am your creator i am redeemer and i want to lift you up and make you live a higher life and a better life i want to be the lord of your life and here is on the other hand satan the god of this world saying I'll make you smile, I'll make you joyful. Yes, he'll drug you. He'll give you things that will make you have artificial joy. Artificial joy, plastic laughter. That in the afternoon, you appear happy, but in the night, your bones are aching. Your belly aching and your life all twisted. Now you make your choice. Daniel made his own choice. Look at Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. But Daniel proposed in his heart. Daniel proposed in his soul. Daniel proposed in the spirit there are people they don't have any mind of their own where the stream is flowing that's where the dead fish flows there are people they don't have any soul of their own where the soul of their nation and the soul of their community and the soul of the tribe where that soul goes 
that's where they go. If the soul of that community is violent, they pick it up, they violent. If the soul of that community is idolatrous, they pick that up, they're idolatrous. If the heart of that community is after things that will not profit, that's where their heart will go. They do not have a mind of their own, a heart of their own, a plan of their own, a life of their own, a decision of their own. But Daniel singled himself out. He said, although when Babylon that's the external surrounding. But the external will not control him. In, inside him, he had a heart. A heart with a purpose. A heart with a plan. A heart with a decision. A heart with a goal. A dream. An ideal. And it says, and Daniel purposed in his heart. Are you a man? of a heart, of one heart, of one goal, of one desire, of one direction, or do you just blow here and there? You don't have any mind of yours, any soul of yours, any plan of yours, any goal of yours, and you do not know that here I am, my name is different from their names. My God is higher than their gods. Here am I. My future is well planned out by God from all eternity. Because of that, I'm not going to live like them. But you cannot do that without heavenly help. Heaven's help will come to you today. Heaven's grace will come to you today. And so, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the priests of the eunuchs that he would not defile himself. Now, Daniel had the right language. He had the right perspective. Now, all those people, they didn't call that thing defilement. They called it the leakages. They said, look at this, the, the delicacies of the king of Babylon is brought to us. Well, it's in the same thing you know, with Nebuchadnezzar. They didn't call it defilement. They called it dentures. They said the dentures of the king of Babylon, the highest person, number one in the world, at the emperor of an empire at that time. They said the dentures of the king are brought to us. But Daniel said they're not dentures. They're not delicacies. They are defilement. You know, the world has a kind of what understanding. They do not have the proper understanding of what is brought to them. Uh, for example, let me look at Mark chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 21. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. For from within... Out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, verse 22, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Look at verse 23. All these evil things come from the from within and defile the man now you understand the language of jesus and he is the one that has the right language the world does not call all those things we read about in verses 21 and 22 they don't call them defilement they say desires they say i desire that 
The sick, they are dentures. The sick, they are delicacies. The sick are evil. They destroy lives. They define lives, but they call them by a good language. And because they put a good language on them, and they say, we're just being sociable. We're just being, you know, nice to people. We say we're living a good life. They're drunk. They're living a good life. They live on drugs. They're living a good life. They're covetous. They're living a good life. They're envious and jealous of others. They, li they live a good life. To them, it's a good life. The dentists, the desirous, and they are the delicacies of life. But Jesus, you see the right language? It says, these things, they come from within and they defile the man. But then we who have and who want to have a better future, a higher future, a glorious future. God will give us grace. All those dainties of the world, all those desires of the world, the Lord will cleanse us from them in Jesus' name. Your amen is great. And your amen looks like somebody who is going to have a better life from tonight in Jesus' name. Now, look at what, look at what God has decided he's going to do for you. Look at Ezekiel chapter 36, and I'm reading from verse 25. Ezekiel chapter 36, and we're reading from verse 25. It says, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. You'll be different from the rest of the world. You'll be like a Daniel. And the Lord will lift you up. And the Lord will promote you. You'll have a better heart. A better soul. A better destiny. A better decision. And a better, greater grace than you ever had before. In Jesus' name. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. And you shall be clean and ye shall be clean anybody there I said it shall be clean the blood of Jesus will wash you whiter than snow and ye shall be clean and from all your filthiness and all your idols will I cleanse you will God cleanse you Look at Daniel once again, chapter 1, reading from verse 8. In Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, it tells us now, but Daniel purposed in his heart. It starts with a purpose of heart. I want next year to be better than this year. It starts with a purposeful heart. I want my life. I want my achievement. I want my goal. I want my destiny to be better than what it used to be or what it should have been. I want to have a better start from today. It starts from the earth. A better life from today. It starts from the earth. A, a more, a more achievable a goal that like from today. It starts from the earth. And if you will make up your mind and you say, I know God has sent Christ to die for me and to cleanse me and to wash me and to make my life beautiful. And I want that Christ to have the right place and the appropriate position in my life is start from your heart you have to be like daniel that daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the things of this world and with the kings of this world and with the people of this world or with the wine which they drink therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuch that he might not defile himself and everything changed and everything turned around tonight this is your night it's your day your day of decision and your life will be better from tonight in Jesus name I'm coming to point number three now point number three I'm looking at the divine call to the highest and brightest light 
helps you to picture in your mind what kind of life do you want that angels will say this is good this is much better than anything we have seen of him before we have seen of her before for God to look at your life and for Christ to look at your life and for the whole all the saints in glory to look at your life and to say this is great this is bright and this is high it's like this is the life that even angels would like uh, to appreciate and would like to see Number three is the divine call. The Lord is calling you to that kind of life. In the future, you will not be like you are today. Next year, you will not be like you are this year. Purpose of mind. Achievement in your life. Great things in your life in Jesus' name. And look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 36 and I'm reading from verse 11 Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 11 and I will multiply upon you man and beast I hope you understand there were no cars at that time there was no aeroplane at that time for the children of Israel to make progress and to carry what they were going to plant in their farm and what they were going to use in another town, they were giving beasts a body that will carry their body, beasts that will carry them, that will move them from one place to the other. And the Lord said, I will multiply men upon you. Helpers will be multiplied in your life. Supporters will be multiplied in your life. Encouragers, the people that will encourage you and move you to where you are going to be. This from tonight, they will be showing up here and there. Men, helpers will multiply in your life. And then the beast, that means for them, the beast of body that will carry your load and your body and carry them away, they will multiply. That will carry you. And then for us today, cars, it will multiply. Means of transportation, it will multiply. And they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will say to you, after your old estates, before I explain that, give me a good amen. You know, there are people that they look at their lives. They look at their family background and they say, well, the good old days. We ate without scarcity. We slept without insecurity, without any fear. And we walked our street without any uh, kind of apprehension. Whether they're going to get back home or not. They say the good old days when ladies were ladies and men were men. The good old days when your brain gets to where you ought to get to. Whether you have long leg, you have short leg, you, can, you are coming from the village you can attain any position in life the good old days that's the good estate the lord is talking about those good old days the lord will bring back to your life no regrets in your life anymore and you're not saying uh, if i had lived 50 years ago 100 years ago your life today will be better than 150 years ago in jesus name I will say to you after your old estate, look at this, look at this, and will do better unto you than at your beginning. Will do better unto you than at your beginning. Better. Better. Better life. Better health. Better joy. Better happiness. Better security. Better protection, better prosperity, and better in every area of your life in Jesus' name. My young boy, my young girl there, what if you had a better brain? Where will you get your better brain is coming your way? 
and somebody is sick there is down am i going to get up what if you have better health tonight better health is coming your way and you know there are people that have lost interest in living it's like why am i alive what am i what am i doing here the lord will give you better vision and better vision and passion in your life in jesus name you wake up in the morning and as you wake up and then somebody is asking what are you going to do today what are you going to be today what are you going to achieve today and what are you going to get today you say i don't know even though i've just got up today i'm so tired i'm so weak i don't i don't even know why i'm here you know but better destiny has come for you as you link up with the Lord, he says, what I have for you is something better. That better thing will come. And he says, I will do better things unto you. Unto who? I'm looking for the person here. It's coming your way. You'll have it in Jesus' name. I will do better things for you than at your beginnings, and you shall know that I am, not I was, I am, not I will be, I am the Lord. Tonight, you will know that God is the Lord. I said you will know that God is the Lord. You have been hearing about the, you know, GCK, uh, the, the, the gospel for every creature. And we've been going from place to place. Everywhere we have gone, we've seen people come out of bad condition, bad situation, poor health, and, uh, you know, terrible, terrible things. And they have been coming alive to something better. I was waiting for your amen. Uh, let, let me show you. Look at this uh, beloved sister, Mrs. Sunguzi. Uh, let her tell you what happened to her. She had elephant tears. Those legs, they were so big like this. And on the crusade, one of the nights, as we prayed, immediately after the final amen, that better scene started. As it is going to start for you tonight. Let her tell you her story by herself. Sister Tangoze, please go ahead. I'm a very energetic woman. I love my kids and I love the things of God. I never knew that the devil has a plan for me. My name is Ngozi Williams. It was on the 16th of October. I went to bed in the middle of that night, that on the 16th. I felt cold and I asked one of my daughters to give me water. After taking that water, Breaking in the morning, which is on the 17th of that October, my leg starts swelling. 18, my leg starts swelling. And I thank God that the next three days, is GCK is coming up at Bowery. I did not even attend the Alpha location. I'm in a satellite. And I believe that anywhere I am, that my miracle will come. That on the first day of GCK in Bori, I went to the satellite with pain all over my body, including down my leg. When our daddy, Pastor W.F. Kubui, starts praying and he said that everybody should put his or her hand wherever we are having a challenge. And I placed my hand. He mentioned my case. Any he said, swelling? Going every up? swollen leg. Hunched back. Fibroid, elephantiasis, I command you, come out in and Jesus' name. And I say, name. Amen. Immediately, my swollen leg, there is water all over my leg, the thing bursts and start pouring water. Start pouring water, drawing water. And immediately, I begin to sweat. He said, we should do what we cannot do before. All this while I'm sitting down, but immediately I stand up and I begin to walk everywhere. I said my healing has come. On that last day of that same October GCK, he command every wound to dry up. And my leg dry up. As you can see, before I cannot wear slippers, I'm moving up 
be moving with empty leg, but today and with my slippers, and I have come to return all the glory to God because Him alone is worthy to receive all my praise. Amen. Your day for a better future has come. Before I continue, let me bring this uh, young girl before you. Blessing is the name. She'll tell you, or the mother, what actually happened. The joy of every mother is to see your child talk, hear, see. Suddenly, my daughter, Blessing, she started complaining to me about her right ear, that mommy, she doesn't hear well with the right ear. I asked her whether she threw anything inside. She said no. I was just planning to take her to hospital before the GCK Bori crusade. She went there after hearing the testimony from a brother about his son. I encouraged her as you are going to this Bori, that you are not coming back with this pains. Pray that God will touch you to share your testimony. I think the fourth day of that crusade, after the man of God prayed, she said that something left her ear. She shouted, the auntie that was with her, they called me. Is it true? They want to confirm. I say, yes, this girl has been complaining to me. I'm very happy that God touched her and that she's dirty now. She has not complained about the ear. I'm very happy that she's, she has received her miracle. May the name of the Lord be praised. I can hear with my right ear. I don't feel any pain again. I want to praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Your own time has come. Better, better, better life in Jesus' name. The Lord has promised and he cannot fail. I will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Look at verse 37 there. In verse 37, thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. And I will increase them with men like a flock. He says, we must ask him. We must come to him and give ourselves to him and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And the moment you do that, that better thing will begin. John chapter 10, reading from verse 10. In John chapter 10, reading from verse 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am calm that they might have life you have eternal life tonight Amen. happier life tonight Amen. righteous life tonight a gracious life tonight Amen. and that they might have it more abundantly more abundantly are you there more abundantly Amen. it will get to you Amen. you'll enjoy that abundant life that eternal life and every power of Satan, every form of sickness will bow out of your life in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 17. And the 17 returned again with joy. You are going back home with joy. The joy of salvation. The joy of healing, the joy of deliverance, and the joy of a better life. And the seventh year returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. The devils wanted you to be subjected unto them. The devils, the devil, the old serpent, Lucifer, wanted to make you a captive. But now, they are coming under your feet. 
they returned with joy saying Lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name look at verse 18 he said and he said unto them I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven every power of Satan will fall before you they have been blocking your way before as you are going now they will clear out of the way before you and look at what you are taking back home with that better life, better salvation, better healing, better deliverance. In verse 19, in verse 19, behold, I give unto your power. Behold, I give unto your power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of your enemy. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. You will live your life to the full. Yeah. Nothing will cut your life short because of the better deal the Lord is having with you now. And then in verse 20, it says, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not. That is, your joy should not be limited to, I am healed. Yes, you are healed. You are also saved. You will not limit your joy to, I am delivered. Yes, you rejoice because of that. But you are delivered and you are also born again again in Jesus name notwithstanding in this you just know that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven what's your name I said what's your name I said what's your name that name God or the pen of heaven in the book of heaven in the book of life will write that name at this moment in his book in heaven in jesus name and when your name enters the register of heaven the register of the lord day and night the almighty god will be watching over you you turn to this side, blessing. You turn to this side, blessing. You look this way, blessing. All the names that are in the book of life, your name will come out of the book of death, premature death. Your name will come out of the book of uh, incurable disease. Your name will come out of the book of the unlucky, unfortunate, downgraded, humiliated people. Your name will be lifted up from there and brought to the book of life am I talking to somebody there today somebody there somebody there it must come to you tonight it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed that opportunity is coming to you now that the Lord will take away your name from the book of criminals the book of sinners the book of the unfortunate the book of the perishing the book of the incurable incurably sick people he'll take your name out of that and bring your name into the book of life and bear Greater things, greater things, higher things will begin to happen to you, you today, from today. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want that privilege, that better thing to start now, and that eternal life to start now. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. God bless you there. Raise up that hand very well. God bless you there. God bless you there. Online, you are there. You want that better thing to happen to you and for the Lord to put your name indelibly forever in the book of life. Anywhere you are, over the radio, over the television, online, and here the Alpha location, great things happening now. Raise up that hand. If you're raising up your hand, you'll stand up wherever you are. You're raising up your hand, you'll stand up. God God bless you there. God bless you there. Stand up, stand up, stand up and say, yes, I want that life of Christ. 
I want that better life, and I want that better future. I want that eternal life. Stand up wherever you are. I want the forgiveness of my sin, and I want God to take away my name out of the book of sinners and the book, uh, the book of criminals, and bring that name, my name, in the book of life. Wherever you are, stand up, raise up your hand and stand up. As you're standing up, tell the Lord, Oh Lord, here I am. Here. I am. I thank you for a great thing happening to me today. I thank you for your grace happening to me today. I thank you for lifting me up from that humiliation. And you are leaving me, you are, uh, you are leading me to divine honor. Stand up and tell the Lord that and turn your back on the ways of the world and turn your back on Babylon and turn your back on the lifestyle of defilement in Babylon and come to the new life that Christ, our Redeemer, our Savior is calling us to right now a higher life, a brighter life, a better life, eternal life. As we're standing, I'm going to pray with you now. Keep up your hand as I pray with you here at the Alpha location on radio, television, online, everywhere. This prayer is for you now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we have turned away from the lifestyle of Babylon and we come into the kingdom of God right now. Receive everyone in Jesus' name. Forgive their sin. Blot out all their transgression and all those evil things of the past they have done that made their names to be in the book of sinners and criminals lord forgive and cleanse them wash them whiter than snow and let eternal life come into them right now and the grace to live a life transformed by the grace of god grant to everyone right now confirm that salvation the peace of mind that joy of salvation in every heart now thank you lord in jesus name we pray god bless you keep on standing our counselors are there and uh, they will interact with you, ask you questions, and then uh, they want to put your name down as somebody whose name uh, has entered into the book of life. After that, shortly now, I come back to pray for you. Healing, deliverance, miracles, signs, and wonders for every one of you tonight in Jesus' name. We we'll call on our state pastor uh, to lead us in this time uh, of counseling. you couldn't have made a better decision. The decision you made now to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ is the most glorious, the most blessed decision you could have made. And you have made it. Congratulations. So give all the necessary information as the counselors are by you. And if you are watching online and you also gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message, Look very well, there is a link on your screen below your player there. Click on it and fill the form so that we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. The link is just there on your screen below there. Click on it. Complete the form that appears to you there. And when you do that and you send it, it will assist us to give you further assistance in your new work with the Lord. Remember, you made a great decision. It's glorious. You couldn't make a better decision than that. And if you were connected to all through the radio of television, there is a link too. Look at the number, the WhatsApp, plus 
five four 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 nine two six three. Send your name, your phone number, your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to that number. The number again, plus 234-915-444-9263. Send your name, your phone number, your location address, via SMS or WhatsApp to that number. And for those of us that are here at the Alpha location, there'll be a special meeting, lunch hour with Jesus. For all those who gave their lives to Jesus. And that meeting will hold tomorrow by 2.30 p.m., at the campus hall, if you are seeing me, just look at where I'm pointing to. On my own right hand side, the building that I'm pointing to there, that is the campus hall. And for you facing this podium, the building on your left hand side, by 2.30 p.m., the lunch hour with Jesus we hold there. And the counselors should please further remind them. Every convert of tonight's program is expected there, 2.30 p.m. tomorrow. Lunch hour with the Lord Jesus Christ. There, you will be greatly assisted. You will be mightily blessed. Don't forget those of us who are online. See the link gckhq.org slash connect. Click on it and you will see a form there. Complete the form and send it. It will enable us to help you more so that you can stay victorious. You can remain steadfast, and you can be more blessed in this new life that the Lord is bringing you into. And those of us on I mean, at the Alpha location here, give all details, all details. The exact name by which you are known in your neighborhood. And the counselors should please check the phone numbers that the digits are complete. Let's try and move fast because there are so many of them there. And counselors, well, remember to stay with them for the miracle prayer. Don't forget, if you are watching online and you have your screen, whether through your telephone, your iPad, or whatever equipment you are using, you will see a link appearing at the bottom of the screen there. gckhq.org slash connect. Just click on it. It will open up a form unto you, then complete the form. 
This will help us to give you further help so that you can be made stronger and continue us with this wonderful decision that you have made tonight. And those of us who listen via the radio or television, and you also gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, send your number, your name, your address via SMS or WhatsApp to this number, plus 234 915-444-9263. From anywhere, whether from Nigeria, whether from other countries in Africa, whether from the Oceania, Australia, New Zealand, Solomon Islands, whether from Asia, whether from Europe, whether from America, North and South. It's all the same. We will receive that. Counselors who have finished, you please remain with the people so that you can be of further assistance to them during the prayers. If we have landed drop, can we just wave and know that we are finished? At the far back, close to the road, close to the gate, if you are finished, can you just wave from the far back so that you know that you are through there? From the, at the far back, can you wave, wave, wave? Yes, yes, thank you, we can see. Let us see from other parts of the far back there, whether you are finished. All right, thank you. In the middle area, have we finished? If we have finished, okay, we are seeing some hands waving. Let's see, let's just see from the far end of the middle area towards the campus hall. Have we finished middle area towards the campus block? We're not seeing any hand there yet. It appears for us we are still busy there. Then towards the far left hand side, towards the fence, middle area. We finished. Thank you very much. Already we see some hands there. Meanwhile, I want to implore you to bow down your heads and begin to pray. In earnest expectation of what God will do for you tonight. It is this night that the Lord is beginning with you. The Lord is visiting you. Prayers will be made for you soonest. And your better days are commencing. Your complete triumph commencing. Already the transformation has begun with those who have given their lives to Christ. And there is nobody who does not need a great transformation. Everybody needs great transformation for better times. So begin to pray, begin to commit yourself unto the Lord. And at your very point of need, at your very area of need, trust God. He will meet with you. The Lord delights in your great transformation. He delights in your total triumph. No, don't say, I will wait for tomorrow. Now, Lord, even if I don't have it today, I'll get it tomorrow. No, why not today? Why not today? God wants you to experience him tonight. In a transformational dimension. For complete, total triumph. It's available for you.
Why don't you get up on your feet now and get ready? Of course, the man of God is ready. Heaven is ready. And the windows will soon open for you. And showers of blessing that will effect great transformation in your life for total triumph will come upon you. Yeah, it's already approaching. Yeah, welcome, sir. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Your time has come. The healing has come. Deliverance has come. Better life. Better future. Starting right now, right there. Any challenge you have, you lay one hand on yourself, raise up the other hand, indicating to God that, Lord, I'm here waiting for my miracle. That miracle will reach you there right now. After the final amen, check up yourself. It's there already. Father, in Jesus' name, to all for us today, those of us here at the Alpha location, everyone online, in every congregation and community and country, Lord, I pray that transformation for the power, power to heal, power to save, power to deliver, power to set free, manifest it now in Jesus' name. Any infirmity, any sickness, any disease, anywhere, Lord, touch your people now. Heal your people now. Deliver your people now. Give everyone the miracle right now. Blind eyes, I command you, be open and begin to see. Deaf ears, open up. I begin to hear yeah. dumb tongues be loosened in Jesus' name. Yeah. I pray for those who have insanity, mental problem, be healed and delivered in Jesus' name. Yeah. Swelling in your body, that goiter come out in Jesus' name. Fibroid come out in Jesus' name. Elephantiasis come up in Jesus' name. The swelling of cancer. Be healed in Jesus' name. That water head, big head. I pray that the water there will be flushed out by the power of God. Become normal in Jesus' name. Also, you are healed in Jesus' name. Cancer, you are healed in Jesus' name. Kidney failure, you are healed in Jesus' name. And that spinal cord that has been affected, I pray the Lord will strengthen that spinal cord now. Stand straight, walk straight. Be healed in Jesus' name. With that hand, be healed in Jesus' name. Short leg, grow out equal to the other in Jesus' name. Paralysis, stroke, you are healed in Jesus' name. Everywhere, to my right, to my left, at the back, in the front, healing for everyone in Jesus' name. Over the radio there, over the television there, online, in every country, I pray miracle signs and wonders will float your life right now. Lord, confirm it for everyone. Joy everywhere. Joy of healing. Joy of deliverance. And joy of a new life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. You have got it. It's right there. Check up yourself. You'll find your healing miracle there in Jesus' name.
Amen. Quiet everywhere. Over and over you had in Jesus' name from our Father in the Lord. No problem can we stand that name. I said no problem can we stand that name. Every problem you brought here melts 